G'day. Today we're doing a bit of work on a Jeep Cherokee 3.7 litre 2004 and it's stuck in limp mode. Now we've done a scan, we've got a PO 750 solenoid A stuck. Do all your basic checks, battery, fluid level, all the connections are okay, all that sort of business. We just suck the oil out. Makes a little bit less messy. Now yeah, while we've got it up, we just check for any obvious issues. See the rear diff's got a pinion seal leak. Transfer case. A little bit oily around the front of the transmission pan. Nothing out of the ordinary. Just want to check all the the wiring make sure it hasn't melted through or been damaged. Just make sure you clean all around the pan rail before you start removing it. And you can see this one's celastic on. Torx Plus 20, drop that filter on it. Just bear in mind, you'll get an airlock there when you're taking that off, so you'll get a sudden surge of oil. Especially if you're doing it on the ground, you might get a splash of oil on yourself. Now the 3.7 litre, they, ha they can have the 42 RLE and the 45 RFE. The difference is basically the number of bolts in the pan, you can identify it that way. The 42 RLE has got 13 bolts in the pan and the other one, the 45 RFE, has got 15 bolts in the pan. So to get to the solenoid block we've got to lower the valve body. So we're just going to lower the cross member to start with. 15 mil and 18 Now the idea is to get these plugs off. You've got that one on the right hand side of the transmission and on the left hand side you've got, you've got to disconnect the linkage at the top so you can slide the whole thing out and there's also a plug there too. So that's the right hand plug. You can see you, can, you have to take out that little red locking tab before you can press that to pull the plug out. And make sure you blow it all out before you pull it out too. Now I've just tapped it out. And there's a little locking pin there. You can see that little red one. There. That one was just pushed in from the rear forward. So you can just get your screwdriver and just hook it onto that and tap it out. And now you'll be able to press that little tang and pull the plug out. Very confined space, so apologies for not being able to film it properly. There you go, got it right out. And this plugs on the left hand side of the transmission, you've got to pull that one out as well. That's the range sensor there. And now the 13mm bolt right on that angle is like a dog leg linkage on the top of that selector, on the selector shaft. 13mm, you've got to loosen that and slide that linkage off. Just tap where it is. That's it there. A bit hard to see. When you're doing the job, you'll see that it's there's not enough room there, or not a lot of room. And we wriggle that linkage right off.
No worries. Now, sometimes you'll find that that shaft is a bit rusted or damaged. You need to actually clean that to be able to easily pull it back through the case. And we've just put a couple of blocks in there just to push the, the whole transmission and transfer case assembly towards the right and just put a strap and a clamp there because we don't want that crushing our hands while we're working up there. And now we're going to remove just these 10 mil bolts. You can leave the Torx ones in there for now. Just loosened it, let that drain out. Down a little bit. Got the, yeah. got the accumulator valves and pistons. Hang on, just slowly. I'm holding it. This was the right hand side one. And the other one, you can go down. Go down? Yep. And there we go. Now we've got the right hand side accumulator piston and the left hand side one. I'll just look up one's for the overdrive and one's for underdrive. But this linkage here you'll find has to slot in in there. You can see that? So when you're putting it back you've got to actually push that rod in there and that's your parking. It'll just push it up to select park. Now to get the solenoid block, you've got four bolts. One, two, three, four. Now what we can do on these, they do have a rebuild kit for them. You can, um, you can put new O-rings and whatever in there. I'll just show you what they look like inside. Torx Plus 20. I have actually loosened these first. There you go, you can see the kits actually come with little springs and little O-rings. There we go. You can see it's pretty dirty in there. And you've got your solenoids. And they're actually labelled. You've got your 2-4, low reverse, overdrive, underdrive. You'll find under here there's a little a little seal as well. It's stuck in there. And that just sits on there and those springs just hold pressure on there. If you forget which way that seal goes, there'll be a witness mark. You can see the little X there. Just faintly on that side and that's when the pressure actually pushes up and I'll mark it on there there's no nothing on that side to mark it you can see that one's got a fair bit of metallic debris on there And they do sit in there pretty hard. But see how loosened that one. There's nothing really to lever it off. There we go. Sometimes these O-rings flatten out on there, but quite often the biggest problem is all that metallic debris there. You can see how much is in there. And what happens, that gets attracted to the coil and reduces the magnetic field of the coil as well as gumming up the little valve in there. So you can demagnetize these, giving them flush out, 
replace the o-rings replace these little rubber they're just like a little uh, pressure thing just to keep it down so it's it's not solid it, it's got a little bit of movement and put it back together so we're at our room temperature here is on 1920 degrees we got 2.8 on the what was that one? Hang on, let's flip it around this way so we've got the underdrive overdrive low reverse and we've got the 2.4 out 2.8 2.8 2.8 2.8 so they're all 2.8 quite often they fail when you warm them up so ideally you want to warm them up to about 60 70 degrees and just make sure that they're all around in the same ballpark in the range demagnetize Now each time you test it, if you test it with your voltage supply, you need to demagnetize it to get all that muck out. And you need some sort of medium like liquid, whether it's solvent or oil to actually flush it out properly. You can hear it's free now. We've got it on 9 volts. Car battery is considered completely flat or dead at 10.5 volts. And we can't. There you go. You can hear that clicking there. Stuck again. So when it's stuck, it just basically means that there's still metallic debris in there. The metallic debris gets magnetized and then it holds that valve from being able to release properly but on this one we are going to actually put in a brand new solenoid block but I just wanted to show you how you, it is possible to, to replace the o-rings and to flush it out and if you are flushing them out just take a note these solenoids they can go in two ways but you'll need to have them like this you can see the step step goes like that instead of like that you won't be able to align for that again if you put them in the wrong way so that one goes that way if you were doing it and we've got the brand new solenoid block Make sure there's no dings or damage to it, especially to the new filter. Just do a comparison of the, the plug as well. All good. Clean off all the surface there. Make sure you don't get anything in those little ports. And we just put that back on there.
and it just finds its own little spot there. The transmission solenoid block, you tighten up those four to 5.5 newton meter. Now we've cleaned it all up, ready to assemble. And I'll just show you, if you get there, if you notice here you've got park, reverse, neutral, drive, second, first, and then there's another little notch here. Now that little notch there, if you have a look on that linkage there, there's like a little a little piece that's bent over that actually hooks under here and allows you to fit the valve body so what you need to do is put it down into first low first just tension that up and push it into that notch there and you can see that just holds that rod firmly in place until you get it into the vehicle and then you can just turn this selector so you can align that linkage there on that little slot on the little slot there and you put it back in the first like that and then you'll be able to get that to tighten that uh, nut on that linkage it's easiest if you put it in park and that'll be facing sort of from the left hand side front on a 45 degree and you can get to it a lot easier like that Anyway, I hope that makes sense. You just basically see it'll wiggle around everywhere if you're not in, even if you're in low, and you, you'll have trouble aligning that with where the parking pool goes. So you just push it up with your thumb, put it into that mark, and it's locked in place. Now with the the overdrive and the underdrive accumulators or cushion pistons I can't really find any information on these you know if there's any difference and what I've done is I've measured them up they're both the same same diameter the spring lengths are the same the coil numbers are the same and even the thickness of the coils are the same so I don't believe there is a, a problem if you mix them up. The one on the right hand side of the vehicle is the overdrive and the one on the left hand side at the front of the transmission is the underdrive. The other ones are the 2.4 and the low and reverse, the ones that are up, up in the case. You can replace these ceiling rings, probably not good spot to have the actual join of that ceiling ring on that slot if you can see that and you want to have that around the other way somewhere other, other side and the same as that one for some reason the join is right there maybe the pressure pushes the join there I don't know Now to put it all together, what I've done is I've just opened up those ceiling rings a little bit. So there's a tension of the ceiling ring pushing on the bore, holding, helping hold it up. And I'm going to use this magic stuff, Lube Guard Assembly Goo, and this is the high temperature green one. And I'm going to put a whole heap of assembly gel in here. Now this will just dissolve with a bit of heat and transmission fluid and that'll help hold that spring in place until we get the valve body up you can use the other one as well we just use this one because in the summertime it's almost impossible to to get anything to stay up when you're working returning stuff that's still in the car All right. We'll put a bit of this stuff 
in the bore. Now we've washed the bore with solvent and dried it. We'll put a bit of that same assembly gel in there. And now because we've stretched those, we don't want to force it in like that. There we go. Now I'll just put a bit of this stuff on the bottom there as well. Hopefully to help hold it in place. Alright, make sure those surfaces there where the seal goes up, where that solenoid plug is, and the other one on the other side, on the left hand side, is for the range sensor. So we've got the accumulator pistons up, we've got this locked in into that spot there, we've cleaned all these bores in the case where these go through, good idea to put a little bit of oil on there. It'll just make it go up a little bit easier. And that one's a range sensor. Ready to put up. And we torque these up to 12 Newton meter. Which is pretty hard. Linkage back on. Just wriggle it on a little bit. And we just put it in the park. Right. And that position there is a lot easier to tighten that 13mm bolt from the left hand sort of front corner at about like 45 degrees. You'll know what I mean. Okay, we've got the plugs back in, selector back on, cross member bolts back on, we haven't tightened them up yet. Now we can put the filter back on and the pan back on. Just a good idea to check for the o-ring there, make sure it's there and compare the filter when you buy them. Sometimes different filters have different length snorkels or different widths, so it's always a good idea to compare before you put the new one on. Pan's nice and clean. We're going to put a gasket on this instead of having the elastic on there. And what we like to do is put the magnet up on that little ridge instead of over it like that. And that'll expose a little bit more surface area of the magnet to be able to collect any debris that's floating around in the oil. That's a good idea to put all the pan bolts in loose and that'll avoid uh, or limit what happens here. And sometimes you can end up damaging the gasket or not aligning the holes as well. Okay, we've pumped in about five litres of the full synthetic multi-fluid and now we can just briefly start it and just check the oil level, make sure it's within the range. If it's not touching the dipstick, you want to quickly turn it off. As long as it's touching the dipstick a little bit, you can keep the motor running until you correct the oil level. And we had nothing touching the dipstick, so we put another litre and a half in. So six and a half litres after we've had the valve body out. There we go. No fault codes, up shifting. We did have to adjust the selector a little bit. That little dog leg, we just had to loosen it and push it down a little bit. We couldn't select park easily. So that's all it was. We didn't have to adjust the cable or anything, just move the selector down. And that's why it wouldn't select park properly, because this wasn't pushed down enough. 
it was probably up about halfway, about a centimetre up there. Anyway, I hope that helps. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave any comments or suggestions in the section below. And don't forget to throw us a beer if any of this information helps. Much appreciated and keeps us motivated to make more videos. Thank you for watching.